Okay, the piece Jacob's Ladder is a setting of a uh, text in Genesis, chapter 28, verse 12, uh, which probably was, was better known in general three years ago than it is at the present. But So in English it's, and he dreamed, and it's Jacob who's dreaming, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and its top reached heaven, and behold, messengers of God ascending and descending on it. Uh, it's a very provocative text. It has been for a long time. <laughs> I generally have short texts which I'd rather repeat and investigate uh, rather than have long ones which I can barely get through. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's basically, you know, the way I went into it. Uh, I've seen William Blake uh, drawings where it is not a ladder, it's a staircase. Because the word is somewhat ambiguous, it could be interpreted that way. Uh, and then um, Bruegel, the great Flemish artist, uh, has ladders all over his, his drawing of the Tower of Babel, because Tower of Babel had to be constructed. So they're basically construction leftovers, or, you know, and people are climbing them, and some of them are just left there, but they're all over, and they're very suggestive, because they're, they're strikingly, you know, objects in something that's kind of higgledy-piggledy otherwise. And uh, again, so the ladder is a provocative image, and I think the phrase that I said is that an everyday image like that radiates imagery out to infinity. Uh, when I first started, which is quite too embarrassingly long time ago, uh, I thought, well, a ladder, well, that's got to be a scale or a mode, right? And, <laughs> and off I went rewriting Hannon or Cherney or Book of Exercises and Scales, uh, uh, and, no, 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 no. and finally just say, stop, this is not the way to go. We have a 12-foot ladder in our house in, in Pound Ridge, which is, we have a very big living room ceiling, so there's bookcases in there. And sometimes we set it up and you go near to the top, and, but you don't really need to go to the top. You go next to the top and get whatever book you got. And then you come down and you say, oh, wait a minute, I haven't looked at that for a while. Like you're browsing in a bookstore, I think it's your own home. Any melodic movement up, holding down is all suggestive of a ladder equally. And uh, therefore, forget about it. And just write the way you want to set the words. You don't have to try to illustrate this because anything will illustrate this. Uh, just worry about making music that you, that you want. And in other words, therefore, it doesn't, there's no message. The, there's, a, there's a playful attitude taken towards the whole image that's been set up there. Before writing uh, Jacob's Ladder, I wrote a piece called Traveler's Prayer. And Traveler's Prayer uh, 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 used pre-existing melodic material from uh, traditional uh, synagogue chant from Italy. It, it doesn't have any steady pulse, and although I could have made it have one, it seemed to work that way. And it's the first time I ever did a piece where, even though it's mostly existed 2-4, uh, it, it, um, it you, you don't tap your foot, <laughs> and, and I didn't feel it that way. It's just, boy, you're keeping time that way, but there's no rhythm. There's even the vibraphone that comes in. It's just a touch of color. It has no rhythmic value. So I thought in this piece, well, you know, is this going to happen again? Is a biblical Texas again? And um, and I just said, well, we'll try it. And I tried it, but these are melodies in Jacob's uh, Ladder that I composed, <laughs> being a, a drummer for life. Uh, so <laughs> there is a pulse in this piece, and it's done with, with the vibes and a uh, string double. And that double, and the fact that the, the, the mallets aren't that hard on the vibes, gives a much softer kind of pulse. It's there, you can certainly hear it, but it's not like having a, a piano and, and, and a, a marimba or, or just piano. It gives me very per percussive. The pieces who are, in a sense, they they um, they follow each other, and I had similar musical preoccupations on my mind, and I was working with biblical texts, partly because I'm 86, and it just felt like the appropriate kind of text to work with uh, in my uh, late period. <laughs> so that kind of thinking, um, I'm I, I am religiously inclined, have been for a long time, but uh, uh, that came shaped stronger at this part of my life. And so uh, doing a text like that felt like this, that's what I want to be doing. Uh, and uh, so that's what I did. <laughs>